The Challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Run, King! Run, you husband! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, battling through storm and snow as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Joe Crawford ran behind his sled, periodically hopping on the runners to ride. His team was made up of five, six huskies with an exceptionally good dog running as a free lead. Presently, a girl's voice came from the bundle of black bearskin on the sled. Dad! Dad, it's time for you to pull up the dog! Who there! Who you critters! Pull Rex! Fetch him to a standstill! Ah, what's that you said, Sarah? I've been watching the sun. Ah. Quiet down, Rex, you overgrown glute! I can't hear a word that Sarah's saying. Ah. Ah. Now, what was it you said, honey? It's time for you to ride the sled and let me run behind. Oh, I'm not tired. I can take it for a while. Of course you can, Dad. But we just passed Minucci Falls. We'll be in Old Rock in a couple of hours, and I want to be driving the team. <laughs> All right, honey. Being as they're your dog, I guess you've got the right to choose. Just let me get untangled from all these fair skins. I wonder if it's warm enough to go without my park. Well, not by a jugful. I... What's the matter, Dad? Oh, look over yonder. A couple of men just broke out of the forest. They're coming this way. Well, whoever they are, they're mighty big. And they know how to handle snowshoes. They're probably trapped. Well, maybe hunters. They're packing rifles. Hello there. Yeah, hello yourself. We want to talk to you. Well, that's your privilege, mister. Start talking. Is your free lead vicious? Only with people who ask for trouble. We're looking for one particular dog. An animal named Rex. Take a look at that one, Braid. Does that look like Rex? Hey, you look like him. It is Rex, and I'm his owner. My name is Sarah Crawford. That checks, eh, Breed? Right. This is my father. I like to know the man I'm talking to, stranger. You can call me Moose. That's good enough. And he's Breed. We're uh, what you might call a welcoming committee from Old Rock. How'd you know we were heading toward Old Rock? How did you know about my dog? Well, I'll tell you. The dog weight pulling contest is just about the biggest thing of the year in Old Rock. There's always considerable talk about it. We know that. We hear the talk as far down as Dawson. You're uh, aiming to qualify Rex for the contest, right? Right. Ah, the dog looks like all he's cracked up to be. We expect to win that contest, mister. Your dog will likely win the weight contest paws down. If he can get in. Well, Rex will pass the qualifying trials, all right. That's not what I mean. What do you mean? Well, you see, Crawford, there's a matter of an entrance fee. We sent the entry fee four weeks ago. I'm not talking about that. The one I'm... What are you getting at? Don't let your fingers get any closer to that gun, Crawford. You better disarm him, Breed. Right. No, you see here, What's I... the idea? Stand still. <laughs> Tell that dog to be quiet. I don't want to hurt anyone. Quiet, Rick. Quiet, boy. If you think you can get away with holding a gun on me and disarming me... Take it easy, gotta... Crawford. Like I said, we don't want to hurt no one. All we want is the entrance fee. So your dog can compete in the pulling contest. The fee comes to $5,000. What? 5000 It's high. But it's only half the first prize. And you can win a lot more by betting on your dog. But we've got no cash like that. And if we had, I wouldn't pay it to a couple of thieves. You can get the cash in Old Rock. Jake Peavy has cash to lend. Now reach into the sled and take what you need to go on alone. Go on alone? That's what I said. We'll take charge of Rex and the girl as well as the dog team. So we've got the $5,000 cash in hand. Moose and his half-breed companion were heavily armed and sure of themselves. Joe Crawford had no choice but to go on alone and raise money to ransom his captured daughter and the dog team. Old Rock was a small community far north in the Yukon Territory, but its annual dog-pulling contest was an event that attracted people from far and near, and for one week each year the place roared with activity. This was the first time Sergeant Preston, his great dog king, had been to Old Rock. The Mountie paused in the darkness before he entered town. He studied a small, neat house and murmured to his dog. That's the place, King. Does the sergeant need the strangers? 
That's where Kate went when her daughter lived. We'll stop here, boy. <laughs> My name's Sergeant Preston. I think you're Marion West. Is that right? Oh, yes. Won't you step in? Thank you. Wait right here, Kate. Mother, uh, this is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston. How do you do, Mrs. West? You were expecting Sergeant Meade. He couldn't make the trip this time. Well, is he all right? He will be all right in a couple of weeks. He twisted his knee. Feels fine, but I'll oh, let him walk for another fortnight. He sends his best regards to both of you and a letter, Miss Marion, to you. Oh, thank you, Sergeant Preston. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I suppose you'll be here during the dog contest. That's why I was sent here. Oh, they're not like they used to be, Sergeant. With so much easy money being spent on wagers and partying, a lot of unscrupulous men come into Old Rock. That's so I've heard. Well, they know better than to make any trouble while a Mountie's in town. I hope King and I will be able to keep things under control. King? My dog. Oh, yes, I saw him. He's a beautiful dog. And speaking of dogs, Sergeant, there's to be one from Dawson in the contest. Oh? Everyone says he's sure to win. That's all? Mm-hmm. They call him Rex. I'd like to see him. Oh, you probably will. Who owns the dog? Oh, a man named Joe Crawford. Oh, that is, he doesn't actually own it. It belongs to his daughter. A girl my age, named Sarah. I heard that Mr. Crawford reached town last evening, but his daughter and the dog weren't with him. I think I'll find Crawford. Got acquainted. Sergeant Preston, your brother Mounty always stayed with us when he came to Old Rock. Oh, We'd be honored if you two would accept our hospitality. Why, thanks, Mrs. West. I'd like to stay here. But it's rather far from the center of town. I think I'd better stay at the hotel if I can get accommodations. Oh, you can get accommodations, all right. <laughs> Jake Peavy will always make room for a lawman, the old skin flint. You won't like him, Sergeant Preston. He bullies half the folks in town. And then he licks the boots of all the others. I see. By the way, I'd like to accept your hospitality in part. In part? You think my dog, King, might stay here for a day or two? Oh, why, yes. Of course. With so many dogs being brought to town, I'd like to keep them apart. Some of them might feel like starting trouble. Well, then this should be King's home as long as you want it to be. Bring him in, Sergeant. Oh, thank you, Miss West. Here, King. Come in, boy. Oh, Sergeant, he's beautiful. He's so strong-looking. King, shake hands with Miss West and her mother. Oh, you beautiful <laughs> thing. Mother, isn't he gorgeous? Yes, he certainly is. Going to leave you here for a while, King. I'll be back later, boy. The lobby of the old Rock Hotel was filled with people who had come to town for the weight-pulling contest. There were men who came with contesting dogs in the hope of winning one of the lesser prizes. Men who came to buy or sell sled dogs. Men who came to bet. And many people, some of them women, who were there merely to watch the contest and enjoy the excitement. In one corner, Jake Peavy, owner of the Old Rock Hotel, sat with Joe Crawford, whose face was drawn with worry and fatigue. I'm sure glad I met up with you, Mr. Peavy. I don't know who else would have staked me to $5,000. I, uh, I have an agreement all prepared. Just sign it and I'll give you the cash. Here it is. Of course, I expect to be paid for the risk I take in advancing the money. Hey, this here says I assign first prize to you. $10,000 if Rex wins it. It also says that if Rex does not win, you owe me nothing. Oh, but gosh, of course, if you don't like the deal, you can seek financial assistance elsewhere. But, Dad, right if there's no one else in town can afford to stake me to that kind of cash. Well, of course, there's an alternative. Now, uh, there's a Mountie over there near the door. Go and tell him your daughter and Rex have been captured on the trail and are being held until you pay $5,000. Oh, no, no, I... I don't dare call on the law for help. Why not? I can't do it. I can't take the chance. Those crooks would kill my daughter if I went to the law. I'll take your deal. I'll sign it. Uh -huh. Here's your cash. Here's your paper, Peavy. Oh, uh, how are you going to get this money to the men who are holding the girl and the dog? That's a secret, Mr. Peavy. I can't tell you how I am to get it to them. But I got my instructions. Well, you better get that money out of sight, Crawford. The money's coming over this way. He might get curious. I understand your name is Peavy. Yes, that's right, Sergeant. Jake Peavy, owner of the Old Rock Hotel, and at your service, sir. I'm glad to hear that. I'd like a room. Well, sir, we're full up right now. Uh, well, I'll find a room for you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. <laughs> 
Always pays to stand in with the law, I always say. Oh. <laughs> Aren't you Joe Crawford? Uh, me? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, that's my name, Joe Crawford. My name's Preston. I'm glad to know you. I, uh, I'm glad to know you, Sergeant Preston. I'd like to talk to you, Crawford. I'm particularly interested in the dog you've entered in the contest. Well, I do declare, Crawford. <laughs> I guess everyone's heard about Rex. Phoebe, would you see about quarters for me? Uh, oh, yeah. Sure thing, right away. I'll sit down here and talk to Crawford. As Peavy crossed the floor, he fought down an impulse to turn and look over his shoulder. He was uneasy with the presence of a Northwest Mountie in his hotel, but pleased with the successful manner in which his plans were developing. He motioned to the clerk behind the hotel desk and beckoned him to the inner office. Close the door, Slavin. There'll be no one watching the desk while I'm in here, Mr. Peavy. Oh, that's all right. I want to talk to him. How did you make out with Crawford? Fine. He's got the cash. I have an assignment of the $10,000 prize. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh, boy? It's pretty good, yes. But we've got to watch our step. Moose gave Crawford orders to place the money in the hollow tree near the crossroads sometime tonight. You follow him when he goes there. I say. Get the cash and bring it back to me. And we send word to Moose and Breed to turn the girl loose. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. They'll put her on the trail for town so she can reach here in time for the qualifying trials first thing tomorrow morning. I'll take over the desk and find a place for the Mountie to sleep. Now, uh, you keep Crawford in sight. We want to be sure he does the right thing with my money, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue our story in just a moment. Here's important news. The challenge of the Yukon now comes to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday over most of these same ABC stations. Be sure to listen to another adventure of Sergeant Preston and his famous dog, Yukon King, on Friday. And remember, Challenge of the Yukon can now be heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now to continue our story. While the conspirators discussed their plans... Sergeant Preston asked Joe Crawford a number of questions about his dog, giving no sign that he was curious and dissatisfied with the answers to those questions. Finally... So you see, Sergeant, I'm expecting my daughter and the dog will be here sometime between Just now Just a minute, and... Joe. What? Let's start over. Why, uh, what do you mean, Sergeant? Your statements don't hold together. My statements? Explaining why you came here and why your daughter isn't with you, where the dog Rex is... You've contradicted yourself several times. Well, no, see the here. The stakes I... are high in that contest, and a lot of money's been bet on the outcome. Well, what about it? Let's take a walk, Joe. A walk? Come on. We'll see how the weather is. You are uh, going somewhere, Mr. Crawford? Well, we'll I, be uh... back presently. Now look here, Sergeant. Wait till we get outside. Hey there, Sergeant Preston. I found a room for you. If you want to look in at a it, little I'll... while, Peavy. If you're uh, going to take a little walk, I'll be glad to go along and show you the town. I want to talk to Crawford privately. Uh, oh. Have it, Crawford. Well, I don't know what you're getting at, Sergeant. I saw Peavy hand you some money. You have it in your inside pocket there. Well, I... Uh, that is... I, I don't like Peavy. He looks like a man who tried to fix a contest. No, no. Why did he give you money? Please, Sergeant Preston, please don't ask me questions. You've got to take my word for it. There's nothing dishonest between me and Peavy. Why did he give you the money? Well, I, I can't tell you. I can't. That's all there is to it. I can't say a word. If you think I've been paid to throw the contest, that's not it. Rex will be in that contest and Rex will win. I'd bet I'm Rex myself if I had the money. You have money. The money Peavy gave you. But I... Oh, gosh, let me go. Let me go back inside. Where's your daughter? Where's Rex? Why did Peavy give you that money? <laughs> Joe, you need a friend, and it isn't Peavy. I want you to trust me and tell me the truth. Well, I... All right, All right. I have to tell you that the true facts. But you can't do anything about it. If you so much as make a move, my daughter will be killed. Oh? Holding her for hostage and Rex with her. Where? I don't know. All right. Let's have the story. It happened yesterday on the trail from the south. 
Sergeant Preston would listen to Joe Crawford's story attentively. And as he listened, a plan formed in the Maori's mind. Without returning to the old rock hotel, he took Joe's arm and guided him to a small house at the edge of town. Where the great dog came in had been waiting with Mrs. West and her daughter. King, hey, King, this is Joe Crawford. He's a friend, King. Gosh, that's a mighty handsome dog. <laughs> I've heard about you, King, and you're sure all that I heard you was. As Joseph's hand closed about King's big, big furry paw, it was a good grip. King felt instinctively that this was the right kind of man. He looked at Sergeant Preston and as if to tell his master that he liked the friendly tone of Crawford's voice. Then his nostrils quivered as he caught the lingering scent of Crawford's strong dog, Rex. What is it, King? Hey, it looks like he's caught us a scent of Rex. You do know all dogs, don't you, Dr. Crawford? Better than I know people. There's a cake Mom just ate. Oh? She'll be right in with the pot of tea. Okay. Thanks. I'll, I'll put it right down on here. Miss West, we're going to need your help. My help? Yes. Crawford, what do you think of King? He's a lot of dog. We came to this house in darkness. No one around here has ever seen either King or your dog, Rex. King could take the place of Rex in the qualifying trials tomorrow morning. But, but, but Sergeant, my daughter... We're going to get your daughter back, and your dog as well. And we'll do it without paying $5,000 tribute to those crooks. But I want Rex in that contest. According to the contest rules, Joe, the man who pays the entrance fee can enter any dog he wants to. I paid the fee figuring that Rex would enter with Sarah driving. That's right. If you qualify a dog in the trials... You may enter a dog in the finals. It's per- perfectly legal to make a substitution. If King can qualify tomorrow morning in your name, you may enter a dog in the finals. Rex? Yes. We'll have Rex here soon after the trials get underway. Miss West. Yes? I want you to handle King tomorrow morning. You mean I'm to enter? And with your dog? Yes. If you wear a heavy parka and keep it well around your head, no one will recognize you. But, Sergeant... How will that expose those crooks and get my daughter out of their hands? Leave that to us, Joe. Get the king and me. Now, Joe, listen. Sergeant Preston outlined his plan in great detail. And as he talked, Joe Crawford became a changed man. Despair and defeat gave him hope and courage as he heartily agreed to cooperate in the Mounties plans. It was late that night when Slavin came into the office of the old Rock Hotel to report to Peavy. I tell you, boss, there's something wrong. And I don't know what it is. What do you mean, Slavin? I've been watching Crawford, like you said. He's been around town having a gay time, and he hasn't made any any effort to put the money where he was told to. Why, he acts like he wasn't worried about getting his daughter back. Uh, Where's Crawford now? Out out in the cafe with a number of the boys. Well, hi, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, hello there, Crawford. You want to see me? That's why I'm here. Mind if I talk private? You seem to like to talk private. But I'll get out. I want to return the cash you lent me. What? Yep, our deal's off. I won't need the cash to pay off the crooks that's holding my daughter. If you won't, how's that? I can't talk about it, Mr. Peavy. I just want to return the cash and get back the paper I signed. But we made an agreement. I have it in writing. Sergeant Preston says if I had any trouble about calling off our deal, I should let him know. Oh. Well, I... Of course it'll be no trouble. I'll return the extra sign. Right here in my drawer. Here you are. Thanks. I'll tear it up and the deal's all off. See you at the tryouts in the morning, Mr. Peavy. Joe Crawford's manner was lighthearted as he left Peavy's office. But intimately, he was filled with fear and concern for his daughter. He had acted on instructions from Sergeant Preston. He had the utmost confidence in the Mountie. And yet he couldn't help wondering if in returning the cash... He had doomed his daughter to her death. Soon after Joe left the room, Slavin returned. Watch out, boss. Crawford returned the money and got back the paper he signed. Then you won't get the prize money? No. I wouldn't have returned that paper. Except that Crawford has the backing of that Mountie. I don't want to argue with the Mountie. What about the girl and the dog, Rex? I don't know what about them. Do you think they've escaped from Moose and Breed? I don't see how they could have escaped. You haven't seen them around town, have you? No. I've been watching Crawford all day. He hasn't seen them? I'm sure he hasn't. Uh, I wish I knew why he called off the deal. I wish I knew what he and that Mountie talked about. Hey, boss. Maybe the Mountie found the hideout. Maybe he knows where Moose is holding the dog and the girl. Uh, I wonder. You think I ought to go to the hideout and see how things are? Oh, not now. We've got to be careful. 
If Moose gets into trouble, he'll tell all he knows about some of our deals. Well, sit tight, Slavin. Wait until the trial's tomorrow and see what happens. The day of the elimination contest was clear and cold. Crowds jammed close to the roped-off area where each dog in turn was harnessed to a weighted sled. Officials added weights until a dog had pulled its maximum, and then another contestant took his turn. Peavy and Slavin were slightly apart from the crowd. I haven't seen anything of Crawford's girl. Or the dog, Rex. Uh, Crawford doesn't seem to be worried. Look at him over there. Where? Where? Standing with the Mountie. Oh, They're calling for the Crawford dog. Now we'll know for sure whether the girl got away. Slavin, Slavin, look! Crawford, Henry! Dog named Rex! Here he comes! Make way now and you'll see a real dog! <laughs> From everyone there came murmurs and comments of admiration as a slim girl in a heavy parka with a hood that concealed her head and most of her face led a great, powerful dog into position for the trial. No one in the community had ever seen Sergeant Preston's king so everyone mistook the dog for Rex. Joe Crawford did his best to maintain a carefree exterior, accordant with Sergeant Preston's plans. But his heart was heavier than ever, and his voice showed deep concern. Sergeant, if this plan of yours doesn't work... If it doesn't work, we'll try something else, Joe. Well, your dog's ready. All right, Rex. Hold on. King didn't wholly understand the situation when a girl called him by another name. But he did know he was expected to pull the load to which he had been hitched. Pull it, boy! Pull it! The voice of Sergeant Preston came from the sidelines with an unmistakable command. He's pulled it! He's pulled it! Hey, 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 hey. Hold on! Wait a minute! Add more weights to that sled! As the weight on King's sled was increased, Peavy turned to Slavin and spoke in a low voice. Slavin, we've got to see about Moose and Breen. Oh, that's what I've been saying. The girl and dog have gotten away from them in some way. As I told you, boss, if Moose gets into trouble, he'll squeal. Get to the hideout right away and see what's happened. I'm on my way. All right, go ahead. Try that load. All right, Rex. Hold on, hold on. The mighty dog King found the sled much heavier, but he pulled it without great difficulty. He glanced toward Sergeant Preston for a word of approval, but the sergeant had turned his back on the crowd. He was moving rapidly away. King heard his new friend speaking. Good for you, Rex. That's the way. Miss Crawford, that dog of yours has already pulled heavier than any other. But we're going to add more weight and see what he can do. There. Go ahead, Judge. Pile on them weights. Rex will show you. Come on, Rex. Why did everyone call King by the wrong name? King didn't understand it. And why had Sergeant Preston left? He wondered about these things as a sled behind his back was made heavier. Say now, if your dog can pull that, Miss Crawford, he's in the finals without any questions. Just watch him. All right. Come on, boy. Hold. King strained at the harness, tugging, pulling, throwing every ounce of his great strength into a mighty effort. He felt the sled behind him move. King looked at the girl in the parka. He felt her hand on top of his head and heard her voice. Good work, boy. Good work, fellow. You did all right. King wanted desperately to go in pursuit of his master. Let me out of this harness, he tried to tell the girl. All right, fella. She seemed to know what he wanted. Her hand slipped off the heavy leather. There you are. A bark of thanks, then King was gone, racing, streaking across the crisp snow in the direction his master had taken. Sarah Crawford had been kept with her hands tied in a remote cabin, and her dog had been chained in a nearby woodshed. As the morning of the trials advanced, Moose looked frequently at his watch and finally said, It's too bad, miss, but the trials are over by this time. Looks like your dog's out of the running. Now what we do, Moose? I tell you, Breed, I don't know. The boss figured Crawford borrowed the cash and leave it where he was told so the girl could be turned loose. We got no word. We should have had word last night or early this morning, but the cash had been left. It's too bad, Miss Sarah, but it looks like your old man let you down. You pay for this. <laughs> Don't talk that way. You just wait. My dad will find a way to get home. Moose, look out the window. Slavin come this way. Yeah? Maybe cash been paid, huh? The trial's went off on schedule. It's too late. We soon know. I'll open the door for Slavin. Oh, hi there, Slavin. Moose, Moose, are you all right? Uh, sure, I'm all right. What's kept you so long? 
How'd the girl get away? Get away, my eye. Look over there. What? You. Girl, here. But her dog was in the trials, and, and she... I thought that... Her dog is in the woodshed tied with a hunk of chain. Let me see. There, you see? But that dog... The dog that was in the trials, and the girl, who were they? Now, look, Slavin, I don't know what you're talking about. This is Crawford's daughter and her dog. I can vouch for it. The dog was in no weight trials this morning. Well, Joe Crawford had someone entered. Take and I... Now, Mooney! I want to talk to you. It's Preston. Help! Help me! I get him! No, you don't! When Reed's hand came up with a gun, Sergeant Preston charged with battering ram force. A blow to the stomach, a blow to the chin, and Breed went down. Get him! Get him from behind! No, for you two. Slavin leaped on the Mooney from behind, while Loose reached for Preston's throat with fingers like steel bands. Help! 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 Finish you. Hang on, Moose. Hang on. Right. Sergeant Preston called in all his wiry strength and with a superhuman effort wrenched free momentarily. Get him. God gets you. Try this. With his back against the wall, the Mountie ducked and dodged. He delivered blow after blow to Moose's chin. They were hard blows, but the giant kept coming in, reaching with those mighty fists. It was a battle to the finish with no holes barred and quarters too close for gunplay. The Mountie's strength was ebbing fast. His blows became weaker and weaker. Now we get him. Let's get you, don't. The breed was still unconscious, but victory for Moose and Slate it was but six seconds away. Then help came like a furry streak across the snow. It was the great dog King charging to aid his master. Take him, King! King leaped through the door, fangs bared. His full weight struck Big Moose in the chest. That's it, boy. King was everywhere at once, fighting like a demon. Then Preston put all his remaining strength in the final punch. That takes care of you. And Moose went down. Dog off. Pull him off, you kill me! Stand King. Stand, boy. On guard. That dog. Get up, Moose. You're covered. If either you or Slavin move, I'll let you have it. The king doesn't get to you first. Oh, goodness, you came. Oh, Sergeant Preston, these men, they captured me. My dog is hold in the Hold still, Miss Crawford. They... I'll have to cut those ropes while I hold a gun on these three. The breed is recovering consciousness. Watch them, King. Don't take your eyes off them, Sergeant. If you'll just hold a knife All steady, right. I can cut the rope around my wrist. At last. Good. I'll take the knife and you can finish the job and, and release your dog. Oh, but I must tell you, there's a man in town named Peavy who was in with these men. It was a I know all to... about it. Your father's waiting in town. And as for the contest... It's too late for that. No, it isn't. Your dog Rex is in the finals. But... And from what I saw of the trial contest, he's sure to win. But, but how? King entered in his place and qualified. King? Sergeant, I've heard about King. I, I guess he's the only dog in the country that's greater and stronger than Rex. <laughs> He said thanks for that. Well, listen, Marty, this wasn't our idea. I, I don't aim to face a rap. You'll alone. not I... face it alone, Moose. I'm taking the three of you into town. There we'll pick up Peavy. Yes, King, I'm alive to pick up Peavy, thanks to you. And when we get it, boy, this case will be closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is the product of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next Friday to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. J. Michael speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. Radio's Bad Boy is providing plenty of good entertainment these days. Yep, it's Lou Costello. And along with his partner, Bud Abbott, he furnishes hundreds of laughs on his Wednesday night fun fest, plus his Saturday morning kid show. Each week, Abbott and Costello interview the youngsters who have gathered for the broadcast, award prizes, and entertain visiting celebrities. And as a special feature, a trophy and gold medals are given away each week to the boy or girl who has performed a particularly heroic deed. The Abbott and Costello Kid Show is a valuable contribution toward combating juvenile delinquency along with being top-form entertainment. This comic couple of radio can be counted on to supply plenty of fun on their Wednesday night show, especially when they cut loose in a typical Abbott and Costello routine. Don't miss their shenanigans tonight on the Abbott and Costello Show. And for a program every youngster will enjoy, hear their kids' show Saturday morning.